Okay. I got people in the waiting room now. Yeah. Anne Murray is supposed to be. You can just click this card. Oh. oh, it's recording. Oh, shoot. It's not recording yet. Programs in Martin County. We'd like to give you a glimpse of how we got here, how it works, and how do you meet some of our experts. I wanted to provide you a little bit of background. Um, since this is converting from septic systems to a central sewer, you might want to know a little bit about the septic systems and how they work and maybe what some of the issues are with them. So septic systems are known also as on-site sewage treatment and disposal systems or OSTDS for short. So they're the most common form of domestic waste treatment especially in rural areas and unincorporated areas without sewer systems. So Martin County has been around for a long time. So you can imagine there's probably a, a few of these things hanging around. So septic systems, when they are properly sited and they're designed well and they're constructed and operated well, they can offer a very efficient economical means of disposal. Septic tank um, effluent, material that comes out of septic tanks can vary in concentrations of nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus, other constituents like chloride, sulfate, sodium, organics, surfactants, bacteria, viruses, the list goes on. So it's anything that goes into the, into the, uh, down the drain or is flushed goes into the septic system. So the use of a conventional OSTDS can result in contamination of ground and surface water if the soil that is being filtered through doesn't treat or purify the effluent before it enters the groundwater. The process of nitrogen absorption and nitrification and phosphorus retention, so these are the nutrients that we're talking about now, really re get reduced, but they're not eliminated. And so they can have an, a, a pretty big contribution to ground and surface water. So generally, the things that um, the septic systems are designed for, like bacteria, pathogen, and virus removal, that, ha that happens, that process happens through um, the removal or um, being inactivated in the soil column by various mechanisms. Other contaminants like personal care products, household chemicals, unregulated substances, pharmaceuticals, they pass right through the soil column with little change and enter the water system. So you can imagine that a leaky or failing system can overwhelm the treatment process and it can result in really significant contamination of both groundwater and eventually surface water. Also affects uh, potentially human health. And as we know, it can degrade ecosystems. I wanted to move over to the graphic that you have been staring at. Um, uh, so this is a home. It's connected to a septic tank through a line. The septic tank takes out the solid waste material and the effluent liquid then enters the drain field. And that is a system of perforated pipes and gravel trenches that does the work of filtering, the primary filtering. That effluent then filters down into the soil column where the process of absorption and purification happens before it enters the groundwater. You can see on this graphic that there's also a, a drinking water well. That's very common with, with properties that have septic systems. They also have drinking water wells. So as you can imagine, if you have a leaky or failing system, um, one might have compromised um, water in there in that um, available to them in that well. So how many septic systems do we have in Martin County? Well. According to the Department of Health in 2017, there's over 30,000 tanks in Martin County. <clears throat> you can see them, they show up here in uh, green and dark green, and they run the whole width of the county from west uh, to Lake Okeechobee, all the way east to the um, to our key waterways. 
So there's a significant number of septic tanks in Martin County. So the conversion benefits um, are many. Uh, they really uh, run the gamut from environmental protection to protection of health to greater flexibility of, your, of property use. There's also a, a, an evolving number of state initiatives that are seeking to better protect our waterways. And they result in more stringent regulation of, of uh, what can enter a waterway, funding for and in support of septic to sewer conversions, as well as evolving legislation and regulation that support reuse technologies aimed at advanced um, treatment of wastewater for beneficial use. Here's a little glimpse of the, of the past. Um, so we, we are well aware that the St. Lucie estuary is heavily impacted by surface water discharges. And um, understanding the range of those discharges has really evolved over time. It wasn't always so apparent. It all began in the 1900s with a network of canals that were constructed to drain the large watershed area that feeds into um, our estuary area. And that was, this, these canals were formed um, to alleviate flooding and also to increase the potential development of properties. So the health of St. Lucie estuary and the causes of impairment have been controversial for decades, mostly pointing towards watershed discharges, including stormwater and agricultural runoff, and even more so from the prolonged high volume releases from Lake Okeechobee. But the pollution doesn't stop there, and we've gotten to understand that better through time. The septic tanks also pose a really significant threat to waterways. And um, that understanding, that evolved understanding, has really led us to uh, this really concentrated water quality um, improvement program. Martin County's Board of County Commissioners has been very active in its support of uh, water quality improvements um, and support of the septic tank, or excuse me, the septic to sewer program. We want to show you a few of the highlighted activities from just the past few years. In 2015, 24 priority areas were identified in need of septic conversion. And most of those, of course, were adjacent or near to waterways Significant contributions of septic systems from wastewater contamination have been confirmed by a number of studies. One of the most recent um, was in two of these priority areas, Golden Gate and Old Palm City. And that was a year long study that was conducted by Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute. That same year, the board directed staff to move forward with conversion plans for North River Shores Phase Two as well as Golden Gate and Old Palm City. In 2018, the board adopted the 10-year septic to sewer program. And the following year, the board adopted the Connect to Protect Grinder program policy. And that was formulated to support and accelerate the implementation of the septic tank elimination program, offering incentives for early connection to homeowners. In 2019, it also marked the official beginning of the program implementation. In other words, 2019 is year one of project construction. I wanted to highlight some of, the, um, uh, some of the most key portions of the Connect to Protect program. Um, again, it was initiated in 2019. It is a 10 year program estimated to end in 2029. The value of the program is around $177 million, and its aim is to make sewer service cost-effective through economies of scale and operating efficiencies. And it's gonna be available to over 10,000 residential properties. Of those properties, 3,500 will have water and sewer service made available to them. We wanted you to know that Martin County is working really closely with our public works department to reduce the disruption to the communities um, and also to reduce costs by streamlining and coordinating projects in an interdepartmental way. The program objective is to provide long-term health, safety, and welfare, not only for the county residents, but to our visitors. 
want to be significantly reduce the septic related contamination, both on the residential properties and also to our waterways. So what are the components of these of the Connect to Protect program or the Septic to Sewer program? Well, it's a 10 year program. It's divided into two five year work plans for sewer and water extension. So based on cost effectiveness, there's actually two types of sewer systems that are included in the program. The, um, the first is the vacuum sewer system and that's slated for communities of 300 units or more. The grinder sewer is offered to communities with 300 residential parcels or less. The graphic here to the right shows an aerial extent of the priority properties and they are colorized. The colors really just match the timing within that five-year program. And you can see the emphasis on pro um, properties that are in close proximity to the waterways. The estimated construction schedules in the upper left-hand corner, and that along with a whole bunch of other information about this program is available if you follow, um, uh, if you follow, uh, if you, just get to the website. I just lost my words. Um, if you if you log on to our website, there's a Connect to Protect program that shows all kinds of information about um, about our program. So there's nothing like um, being on the ground to really understand what the conversion process is like, and this is a great way to be able to see. Um, what's happening in Golden Gate, as well as hear a little bit about, um, about the program from our county staff. So without further ado, we're going to watch this video. Right now, they're actually doing an inspection of the septic tank. Utilities and solid waste project manager, David Duncan. The contents have been removed, and they're perforating out the bottom so it does not hold any more liquid. It shows how this one will dry up with the retrofitted for sewer. We're doing a uh, grinder conversion, which is basically taking the septic and eliminating the septic out of its service, and replacing it with a grinder that comes basically to the county wastewater facility. The problem with septic tanks in general is runoff. Even a tank in good condition only holds solids. Liquids will always percolate out into Florida's sandy soil. In Ohio, grinder tanks are being installed. Septic tanks don't provide nutrient reduction. So in the case of nitrogen and phosphorus, which is the two uh, nutrients or constituents that we're focusing on, even if a septic tank and drain field are considered to be functional, it's still loading the river or loading the groundwater table. Bill Keithley is Martin County's Utilities and Solid Waste Chief Project Manager. He says a study presented to the Board of County Commissioners in 2015 showed that our own septic tanks were contributing to the pollution of estuary. There was about 45 areas in the Martin County Utility Service area that were identified as a threat to the Indian River Lagoon through septic tanks flowing into groundwater and then into the local water body. So, in 2018, the board adopted the Septic to Sewer Conversion Program with the goal of removing 10,000 septic tanks in 10 years. We're probably at about 1,500 or so that we have available right now. When this project finished, hopefully uh, this summer or into the fall, this will be another 835 homes that have available. This project that he's talking about in the Golden Gate neighborhood is the installation of what is called a vacuum assisted gravity sewer system. Here, septic tanks are disconnected and a line is added to a basin near the road. The whole system is under vacuum pressure and waste is evacuated out to a nearby collection facility where it is then pumped to the wastewater treatment unit. Bill says the county has been able to get some serious grant funding for these projects, helping save taxpayers millions. This particular project got a $2 million grant. My next project will be a whole pond. $2 million grant for that. Fort Salerno, New Nairobi will be right behind that. And we got an $8.5 million grant. And then we have Rocky Point a few years out, and we got a $10 million grant for that. Right now. So I'm back. Um, and sorry, sorry to interrupt, but um, 
on the next video, can you make sure to hit the closed captions? Doggone it. Thanks, Vincent. I had been have a note right here that says closed caption. Thank you for the reminder. I will be sure to do that. And if I don't, please remind me. Okay, so as the video just stated, some serious funds are needed for these cost intensive projects. And uh, we've developed a comprehensive funding plan that is that is just that. It is, um, it is tapping into a number of, uh, of funding mechanisms. Um, so I'll start off with the, um, every year the, the board approves legislative priorities. And that makes known to the state what our top initiatives are. It also helps us to appropriate state funding. This has been very effective um, effort for the septic to sewer program um, it, as it's become known as one of the most comprehensive in the state. The county dedicates over two and a half million dollars a year to the program from state revenue sharing as well as franchise fees. I'm gonna turn it over to Dave and Phil to talk about the um, self ship and the SRF funding. All right, Ann, uh, the, the self, uh, the Solar Energy Loan Fund is a uh, Fort Pierce not-for-profit that helps residents and assists them in financing the program through our bill pay or our uh, water wastewater bill that they will be receiving at a fixed rate of $85 a month. Um, it's a very good program. It's very easy to qualify. It can be applied for online. There are folks that will assist you or very, very helpful in getting you through the program. Uh, and the criteria is basically as long as they've got an existing account with Martin County and they're in good standing, they will qualify for that program. Uh, the other program is the uh, State Housing Initiative Partnership or the SHIP program, which is based on uh, the income of the resident, the house value, and those are typically a forgiven loan uh, paid through, uh, through the government, uh, state of Florida legislature, um, where they don't have to pay it back. And it does last a certain amount of years. They have to live in the home in order to have all that finance covered and paid for it 100%. So, uh, this is Phil Keithley. The state revolving fund loan program is federal funds that come into the state of Florida and local governments are able to access those funds and apply for loans through the program. Uh, typically those loans are set up for drinking water quality. It's called the DWSRF program and the clean water, which applies to our septic to sewer conversion program. We hope to utilize uh, this uh, funding mechanism over the next nine years as long as funds are still coming into the state of Florida. It's a very good program. In the case of Golden Gate, which is under construction presently, we were able to attain a 0% loan for 20 years. So it's also very advantageous to all of the people that are paying, uh, paying assessments and paying for these projects. Great, well, thanks. And I'll follow up with the, um, the federal, state, and uh, local grants. And I have a graphic here that shows um, our current awards and the projects that they are assigned to. Almost $25 million of uh, grant fundings in play um, at this moment for both grinder and uh, vacuum projects. So these funds are used to reduce the cost to residents. It's also to fund new infrastructure. You can see the, um, the agencies that are involved here are, um, are both state and local. Um, we have a, a wonderful partnership with the Indian River Lagoon Council and they have been uh, partnering with us for the last couple of years on um, our grinder program. Uh, and we're grateful for that. I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about, we're using the words availability and connection. Um, so service can, is available and then, then the connection happens um, after that point from the resident standpoint. So service that's available um, in just, just to present. So the, the program began in 2019 and to, through present 2022, we have service available to almost 2000 residential units. Of those, 
about 40% are connected. That's a really great rate. And we are, um, we're, we're excited about that. It shows the, how well this program is being, um, is being embraced. In a five-year work plan that we talked about, the two five-year programs, uh, work plans within the 10-year period, uh, that takes us through 2023. And you can see that it's, um, that we almost double the availability to residential properties and the connection rate, well, we are hoping that it's gonna exceed our expectations. Because homeowners are not only seeing the benefits to their properties and the flexibility of use, but also to the environment. And they also wanna capture offered connection incentives to reduce costs. So a win, win, win. Being a scientist, I like this slide probably the best. Um, we felt strongly that um, as we are doing these um, conversions that we needed to be able to quantify what the nutrient reduction was. So we initiated a three-year program um, that to monitor the nutrient levels in the Golden Gate area, that project that is, um, that is active right now. Um, we wanna make sure we understand what were the water quality benefits to um, the St. Lucie estuary. So data has been collected uh, before, the project before the connections are being made during the project as connections are being made and then after the service availability. So that's to again around um, 775 properties, 774. And the purpose of it is to calibrate a nitrogen model um, that was created by the Florida State University and adopted by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. The model is called ARC Inlet. So this graphic shows the modeled impact of septic systems on waterways. And you can see that those streaks of yellow, those are the properties that are showing the most contribution to the waterways. Um, their proximity is closer, so that kind of follows the further away that the properties are, the less the impact is to, um, to contributing nutrients to, um, to those significant surface bodies. I think that's the end of my, uh, my part of this. And I wanted to turn this over to Phil to, um, to take us through the vacuum sewer systems. Thanks, Ann. <clears throat> One of the sewer collection systems that Martin County utilizes for retrofitting existing neighborhood, uh, neighborhoods currently using on-site septic systems is called a vacuum assisted gravity sewer system. The system can be constructed along the edge of roadways instead of excavating the entire roadway and then totally reconstructing the roadway base, rock, and asphalt, which saves time and money. The system is used for our large projects uh, with units greater than 300 being served, and it's funded through grants, state revolving fund loan program, conventional financing, and local matches from Martin County government. For these large projects, the Martin County Board of County Commissioners establishes a Municipal Service Benefit Unit, or Wastewater Assessment, wherein each benefited property to be served is required to pay a pro rata share of the overall construction costs minus any grants and local contributions. The goal of the BOCC is to not exceed a lien of $12,000 against each benefited property. However, in this current economic environment, that might change. The benefited property owner is allowed a period of time to pay the lump sum of the assessment or has the ability to finance over a 20 year period, which is collected on the annual property tax bill. Following is a short film on how a vacuum assisted gravity sewer system works. Our current provider of vacuum sewer equipment is through a company called AirVac and they produce this film. And okay, okay, one second here. There we go. Uh oh. We improve the quality of life throughout the world. And ecological wastewater solution. Once you see vacuum technology, you'll understand why so many municipalities and developers are installing air 
vacuum sewer systems. For the customer, an air vac system works just like any other sewer system. Traditional gravity lines carry wastewater from the source to an air vac valve pit. When 10 gallons of wastewater collects in the sun, the air vac valve opens and differential pressure propels the contents into the vacuum layer. Wastewater travels at 15 to 18 feet per second in the vacuum main to the power station. The vacuum main is laid in a sawtooth fashion to ensure adequate vacuum at the end of each line. At the vacuum station, vacuum pumps cycle on and off as needed to maintain a constant level of vacuum in the entire system. Wastewater enters the collection tank. And when the tank fills to a predetermined level, Sewage pumps transfer the contents to the treatment plants via the sewer stream. Air vac, the world leader in vacuum sewer technology. Air vac, the real leader. Clearly, I'm not that good at videos, so bear with me. We'll just get to the next slide. Nope. <clears throat> okay. All right. Yay, we did it. All right, here's a list of some upcoming vacuum sewer conversions. Number one on the list is Golden Gate. We hope to complete that project uh, by November of this year. As you can see, it'll service approximately 775 single family residential and multifamily residential homes. Uh, early next year, we're going to uh, do an addition to our existing Seagate Harbor Light House Point vacuum sewer system and add two communities called Stratford Downs and Woodside. That add an additional 78 um, homes that are single family residential. This coming year, hopefully by the summer or into the fall, we hope to go out to bid and then start construction on our very large project, Old Palm City. That's going to affect approximately 1,029 homes and as part of that, we will also be constructing water mains through the area to serve approximately 600 homes that don't presently have public water supply. After that, we will move to Port Salerno. Um, that's approximately 952 homes. And then late in 2024, we hope to start the Coral Gardens project, which is approximately 638 single family homes. Our intention is to use the state revolving fund loan program for all of these projects as long as funding is available. Next slide. As you can see on this slide, the photo at the top is a picture of our vacuum pumping station, which houses the vacuum pumps, the collection basin, and what we try to do is construct a facility that fits into the residential neighborhood. Um, the Old Palm City, or I'm sorry, North River Shores phase two vacuum station at the top was completed in 2019. In the lower light right is a picture of our current Golden Gate building. And as I stated earlier, we hope to complete that project by November and then have availability to approximately 775 single family and multi-family residential homes. Next slide. Here we're gonna cover the, gri the grinder sewer program. Uh, and can go to the next slide. You can see a little video. Today, we're waking up to a connected world that lies just beneath our feet because E1 has perfected the most rugged, longest-lasting sewer system in the industry, an economical and highly reliable central sewer system that can be installed on any terrain, flat, wet, rocky, even on sites with dramatic elevation changes. The Extreme Series Grinder Pump, the heart of the all-terrain sewer system, is the global leader in reliability and economy. This progressing cavity pumps evolution reflects everything we've learned in over a half century as the originator and leader in pressure sewer system technology. Watch how the system works. 
an E1 grinder pump appliance installed at each property in the system accepts gravity-fed wastewater from each building. After being ground and pressurized, the wastewater slurry enters a sealed small diameter pipe network installed just below the surface or cross block, following the natural contour of the land. And because the output is pressurized, the wastewater can be transported horizontally over two miles or uphill 185 feet vertically. Ultimately, the pipe network may feed into a larger collection system, either an existing gravity system or a pressure main, or even directly into a wastewater treatment plant. All terrain sewer systems are sealed against inflow and infiltration, providing for maximum operating efficiency with minimum environmental impact. All terrain sewer is the solution of choice to serve some of the world's most extreme environments and most exacting communities, serving well over 2 million end users daily in over 40 countries so far. Choose E1 to empower your next project with the lowest life cycle cost while protecting everyone's environmental quality of life. E1, get after it. Next slide, please. All righty, and uh, <clears throat> we've chosen the E1 based on its reliability and its track record. It's uh, basically the largest manufacturer of single residential grinder systems. And uh, the product they have is very good. We've been very happy with them. We get a lot of support from the manufacturer, a lot of support from the suppliers. They've been very good with us. Um, we've also given them a lot of insight on things that we've come across and they've made changes to adapt to that. Um, unlike the, the vacuum sewer system, the grinder sewer system basically has laterals put out in the main road. Um, the service mains are very small, two, three, or sometimes even four inches. Uh, they're all done through directional or horizontal boring, which means there's no site restoration, there's no road restoration. Um, it's, it's very easy on a neighborhood. And in a lot of cases, people don't even know that our contractors have been in there doing these main installations until they actually start seeing the boxes put up in the house. Um, as you see on the pictures of, uh, above, the E1 takes up a very small footprint in your property. Our contractors uh, do an exceptional job to make sure that the site is fully restored. There's very little damage done to the property. And when we go on site and meet with each individual homeowner, it's a project custom tailored for each individual house based on the existing septic location, the electric, the service, the landscaping. And there's a lot of factors we take into consideration and we actually make the homeowner part of the program. We get a lot of input from the homeowner. So they basically have a lot of say on how we, how we go about implementing this, where we put it on the property. And we work with them to maintain the continuity of their property, uh, not to dis, uh, disturb anything or uh, tear anything up in the meantime. We also, like we talked about earlier, we have uh, financial incentives, which if you pay cash uh, during the first 365 days, that's when our financial incentives take place. So we offer, we have a lot of grant funding, which we can take $1,000 off. Uh, the typical installation is about $8,000, which is, which reduces the cash price to $7,000. We also apply funding towards the SELF program to reduce that to $7,000 also. Um, Martin County will own and maintain the system in perpetuity on your property. Uh, so we take care of it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If there's an issue, there's a number. And uh, give us a call and we get out there and take care of the problem. Luckily, we have a very low percentage of issues with these grinders. We've got over 500 installed to date. And um, we've got a lot of pretty happy customers. Um, and if you can go to the next slide, please. Um, and as you see, our contractors take a lot of care on your property. It's your property, and we want to maintain it the best we can. They go up and above as far as protecting everything uh, surrounding. They use minimal, minimally evasive trenching to run the mains out from the grinder system to the road. 
The septic is actually abandoned on site. All the contents are removed. The bottom is perforated and it is completely filled and sealed to grade. Uh, all the contractors we use are licensed contractors through Martin County Utilities. And they, like I said, uh, and you saw in the previous pictures, they go up and above to make sure the yard is restored to same or better condition when they are completed. So if you go to the next slide. Um, currently, uh, we have completed in Rio West, which is over there off Alice Avenue. That's 221 homes. Under construction now, we've got Rio South, uh, which is over there off of Dixie Highway, which is 134 homes, which should be completed in the next 60 to 90 days. Uh, the project we've got coming up later this year is going to be the Port Salerno Peninsula, about 115 homes. And then towards the end of the year, we're going to get started on Rio Central, uh, which is right over there by uh, Francis Lang Park, uh, which consists of 241 homes. Next slide. And there's no sound coming through. Four, two high sewered areas. And the next step that to help our workers was to eliminate septic tank. I read information about it, and I believe that that was a big problem for our workers. And uh, so then I was feeling guilty that I had septic. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, to the customers at Connect is they no longer have to maintain the septic system or have it pumped out if it starts to back up or if it starts to fail. Replacing those systems are upwards of fifteen thousand dollars. Connecting to our system uh, is less costly than replacing the I think I called the county and said I wanted uh, I was going to go for it, and I think maybe the next day Mr. Duncan called me and uh, said, okay, we'll come and we'll check. And I was amazed at how quickly I have that in an email, but it was immediate. I knew I had a problem because I had two septic tanks and oak trees and uh, a big concrete driveway. And uh, so I didn't even know if it was possible. The benefits is they can actually now take 100% use of their property. We get a lot of people with smaller lots with larger homes that are have a septic tank, they take the full use of their property now with eliminating the septic and converting over to the county grinder sewer. They can take use of that, they can add a garage, do stuff in their yard that they couldn't do before. I was worried initially because I thought they would have to destroy some of the driveway, but they didn't drop or destroy anything. They went in under. Uh, they have to use some air cool machines and they went under the sidewalk, under the driveway. They didn't use the heavy equipment because they had, uh, they knew how much I cared about my yard. And uh, so they had a crew dig the shovels, a very deep trench for the sake of our environment. We really have to uh, do our best. And the one thing that we can do as individuals is go on a sewer from septic because it has been proven that there is seepage and damage done. And there are just so many citizens that have septics. And if we all change the sewer, uh, they can help our river. Well, my skills are very much developing on the, the, the old videos. So um, thanks for bearing with me through technical difficulties and, and outbursts. Um, so here we are at the end of our um, at the end of our presentation. I hope that you walk away with a better understanding of this really important program. Um, it's we, we expect that to see some very, very significant 
improvements in our waterways, and it is um, and it's been a really concerted concerted effort and an interesting effort. Um, this is a quote from the uh, Indian River Lagoon um, grant app, uh, agreement that we have, and I just thought it said it all uh, that they believe. And the Indian River Lagoon is very serious about the water quality, as we all are, that will result in some of the most significant local nutrient load reductions to the Indian River Lagoon. So with that, we would like to take any questions that you may have. And I want to stop sharing my screen. Hi. Great. Hey, Anne, um, yeah. we've got some questions in the chat, so I'll go ahead and read those off. Um, please, everybody in the audience uh, online, please keep yourself muted. If you have a question, um, you can go ahead and enter in the chat or, or wait till I go through um, uh, the questions that have already been entered. And then I'll also take questions from the live audience here in just a few minutes. I'll just go through the chat first. Um, let me go ahead. And you can go ahead and stop uh, sharing. Oh, yep. Nope. You're done, and we'll go through these questions. Um, so um, I've got the first one here from Daniel. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Uh, he writes, uh, he's recently purchased uh, vacant land in tropical farms. Phase two, I'm not sure what that means, but you guys probably do. And his land is less than 0.4 miles away from the, from the St. Lucie River. Um, he says that tropical farms phase two is outside of the S2's five year plan. Um, so to live on the land, he'll need to install a new septic system. Um, as today's webinar shows in the near future, this system will be null and void with the need to connect to sewer. Is there any way for me to connect to sewer now and bypass septic altogether? And he also adds, he thinks it. I think it's no. He thinks it's no. Where they even came less than 0.4 miles away from the St. Louis River. Uh, if, this is David Duncan. If he could give me a call, um, I can go over everything with him. I, I need to know a specific address, and there's other information I need to know before I can give an answer on that. Okay, great. Thanks, thanks, Dan. I mean, Dave and Dan. Um, Dave, if you don't mind putting your uh, phone number in the chat so that uh, Daniel can see that and the sure. rest of you can see it as well. Thank you. Um, so next question is from Phil. Are medication byproducts produced by individuals who take, in, produced by individuals who take medications removed from the wastewater through the sewer tr water treatment process? So he's really talking about the the, I guess the sewer wastewater treatment versus septic. But I guess that question can apply there as well. well I can tell you, this is Phil Keithley. I can tell you based upon our study undertaken by Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute, a lot of the constituents um, that they used as tracers to prove that their nitrogen and phosphorus loading were coming from humans and not animals and other things. We're tracing pharmaceuticals, um, barbiturates, acetaminophen. Um, one of the interesting factors was there's a, a lot of humans consume artificial sweetener known as sucralose. And sucralose does not break down the environment. As a matter of fact, it does not really break down through the wastewater treatment process either. Um, once it gets to our wastewater treatment facility, there's a lot more biological treatment going on. I don't know of any particular studies looking at uh, pharmaceuticals in particular, um, but we could obviously look into that and provide further information unless Ann has something else to follow up on that. Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't have anything to uh, follow up with on that. Um, I'm still working on trying to unshare my screen at this moment. Uh, so thank you. I think you answered the question quite nicely. Okay, um, thank you. Yeah, next question um, is uh, from Phil. How does the sewer system overcome the fact that homeowners do not remove grease from disposal and flushing items that should not be flushed 
such as feminine products, et cetera, will the system back up? Uh, oh, on the on the grinder system, it's it's contained on site, so a lot of those floatable items, feminine products, and so forth, grease will just uh, continue to build up into the system or build up <clears throat> into the grinder tank. But the E ones, the way they're designed, they do pump down and they create a vortexing motion, uh, which allows them to self scour and clean. Unfortunately, some of that stuff will get passed through. Um, and being a grinder pump, a lot of that will get chewed up and sent through. If it does clog, it will cause a problem. Our systems are designed in a way, the grinders at least, where they will not back up in the house. Um, the design of the system is set up so it's lower than finished floor grade. And there is a small hole in the top where if in the event of a catastrophe, it won't back up in the house, but it'll actually spill out on the ground. Even though it's something that shouldn't happen, it's better off that than backing up in someone's home. Uh, in the, this is Phil Keithley. In the case of the vacuum assisted gravity sewer systems and our conventional gravity systems, those items and constituents would flow downstream to our large lift stations, which house um, very large pumps that will pass three inch solids. All of that will then enter into our force main system, which carries it back to our wastewater treatment plant. Anything that's not macerated or whatever through that process will then be physically removed through grit chambers and other items at the wastewater treatment facility and then disposed of at the landfill. Great, thanks guys. Uh, here's a question from Greg. Do you recognize or acknowledge properties with lower elevations relative to groundwater um, are of less risk to our waterways? If, if so, uh, what are these red flag elevations? I, I'm reading it verbatim, so I, I hope that comes across. Um, Greg, if you have anything to add to that um, or any clarification, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. I think it might be interesting for the individual to um, get a copy and if he'll contact me by email, I'll make sure he gets a copy of it, was our um, study that was done by our local engineering firm. Where we identified the 24 areas in Martin County, um, which impacted the river. There was 12 different issues that were looked at. Obviously, one of them was groundwater. The other was proximity to the rivers. There were several of those. And you could look at the ranking process. Um, so obviously the closer to the river, higher the impact. Groundwater table, higher to the surface or closer to the surface, obviously a higher impact. But I'd be happy to share that study with the individual if he likes to get in, would like to get in touch with me. Great, and, uh, thank, thanks so much. And, and I, I, uh, he added a note below, and I'm sorry, I missed that the first time. He meant more at risk versus less uh, with regards to, um, elevation. So basically asking what's the trigger elevation um, where it's, it's, it's a risk to the, to the water quality of the river. And it's not, it's not all based on elevation, soil material, soil types. Um, there's all kinds of things that impact or, or influence how much those constituents are going to make it into the river. Great, thanks. Sorry about that, missing that. Uh, I've got a question here for Vivek, uh, Vi from Vivek. Um, he writes, uh, uh, regarding financing, is the whole project financed by the county at no charge to the residents or are the residents required to pay a portion of it? Thanks. So uh, if I may, can you hear me? Yeah. So yes, hi, good, good afternoon. I'm, I'm from the city of Hollywood. We are in uh, not as a uh, similar boat, but we have about 17,000 septic tanks. So we have the same problem regarding funding such a large project. Our estimate to conversion, convert the whole city last year was just over $400 million. So we are trying to figure out how can we finance the whole city. So my, uh, just to set the stage or context, 
we are trying to figure out is, are you guys, do you, does Martin County has any kind of uh, assessment or is it fully financed by the county and subsequently the residents are billed on the uh, tax roll or in their bills? That's what my question is. Yes, the answer would be um, the latter part of your question is yes. For our large vacuum sewer project where it's a large uh, amount of money to construct that project, we would typically use state revolving fund loan uh, monies, which is at a low interest rate, and they will loan the money over long periods of time. But all of those projects are then go through the Board of County Commissioners and they establish, they establish municipal service benefit units, wherein each benefited property owner pays their pro rata share of the overall cost. They have a choice to either pay it lump sum by a date certain, or then it would revert to the tax bill and they can amortize it over a 20 year process. In the case of our grinder system, as David explained, uh, most of these situations, the utilities department in conjunction with the public works department is installing the low pressure force mains through communities that have less than 300 units. And then each individual property owner has to pay for the infrastructure, the grinder pump and insulation on their property. And then we have some funding mechanisms for them to, to get a loan or however they choose to pay that. But overall, we are doing it through the special assessment process. Great, Great. thank you. You're welcome. All right, and thanks for that question, Vivek. Um, so um, I'll go real quick. There's just a few more questions on the chat and, I, and then I'd like to, if anybody here in the audience has any questions, I'd like to open it up to you. Um, but I'll just go ahead and get through this um, really quick. Um, another question from uh, Greg. In a hypothetical 1,000 home community, how many homes as a percentage would Martin County require to participate in hookups to make infrastructure installations viable? In the case of Martin County, when a municipal service benefit unit is established for these vacuum sewer systems, typically they're anywhere from 18 months to two years to construct. Once the system is fully um, finalized and available for connection, a letter is sent to each and every property owner benefited by the project, and they are informed that they have one year to physically connect to that system. Great, thanks, I, I, Greg. I hope that yeah, I hope that clarifies that. Um, uh, next question from Kim: uh, When will sewer be available in Westwood Country Estates in Palm City? Uh, I don't know that area off the top of my head. Um, I did post my phone number, so if you'd like to give me a call, I can actually look it up piece of, uh, you know, parcel by parcel or that particular area and see where it would fall, if it does fall on our five or 10 year sewer expansion plan. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, question from Jim. Hey Jim, how's it going? Is the grinder system different from what City of Stewart uses? Yes, City of Stewart uses a, a low pressure system. Basically each neighborhood that has a grinder system in it would pump to another lift station to enable that sewage to transport to the wastewater facility. Ours is a low volume, high pressure system, which each individual home could pump up to five miles independently on its own. So we don't have a need to add additional lift stations or larger municipal lift stations to repump that wastewater to the plant. Uh, that's the primary difference between us and the city of Stewart and uh, the city of Stewart, similar to the city of Fort St. Lucie and the way, the way theirs is done also. Great, uh, thank you. It's another comment or question uh, from Greg. Um, he's asking if you could describe the electrical backup safety measures implemented to assure functional pump or vacuum installations and each, and each individual homes or in each individual homes 
anyway, he's really he's asking about the the electrical backup for. Yeah, for I'll these. take that. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's going to be important, you know, especially for hurricanes. I'm imagining that's why he's asking. So. Yes, uh, this is David on the on the grinder systems. Each control panel has a 30 amp generator receptacle built into it. So for the folks that have their own home generator, 6,500 watts or larger, they would have no issue buying a over-the-counter uh, 30 amp cord, which is similar to what they use for motorhomes. Um, and the way the system is designed is if there's a power outage or say we have a storm event and you do have your own generator, you could basically open the side receptacle while the panel is closed and plug it in while it's live, basically, you could be running your generator, plug it into the, dr the grinder control panel. The grinder control panel has a, uh, a mechanism inside of it, which will actually flip over from uh, house power to generator power. It'll turn the system on. And of course, at that point, now you've got power. So if it is at a high level, there'll be an alarm sound, alarm light. You can click the button on the bottom to silence the alarm. It'll turn itself on pump itself down and shut itself off. And once it shuts itself off, you'll actually hear the generator kick down itself on idle. At that point, you can just unscrew the plug and pull it out. Um, in the event of a large catastrophe, we do have sources uh, for Florida Warren and other agencies where we can actually get them to come in and assist us going house by house to go to these homes. Once we get the all clear from the local law enforcement, They'll go out house to house um, with identified homes that do have these grinder systems installed. They'll have a cord, they'll go up, they'll pump the system down and they'll leave a door hang. And that basically gives us an ability to know who's home, who's not home. And if the folks are home, they're asked to please pull the door hanger off when they read the door hanger. And our guys will go back every 24 hours or so until we're uh, back under power again. In the case of the vacuum assisted gravity sewer system, every home will flow wastewater from the residential unit out to the street and into what we call a valve pit. Uh, it typically serves about four homes on average. In that valve pit, there is a valve that is pneumatically activated when about 10 to 12 gallons of sewer is collected in the basin. It, the valve simply opens the entire vacuum system is under negative pressure under a vacuum of typically about 17 inches of mercury and it flows to the uh, vacuum pump station at the vacuum pump station we have a dedicated generator that will run the entire system so as long as we have the generator running the entire system will work and all of the residential units impacted by that system would function through a storm or whatever the case may be with that, also in the case of Martin County Utilities, back when we had some major storms in 04 and 05, we were also able to keep water supply to all of our customers, except for the barrier islands where they were evacuated. So they will be able to use the facilities in their home, no problem during a hurricane event or electrical outage event. Great, Thank, thanks. thanks guys. Um, so I think we've gone through all the questions in the chat. Does anyone here in the library audience have any questions? Yes. Water. So that's our natural resource. Water. 
Um, I don't know if you were able to catch all that, and I'll, I'll do my best to um, reiterate the question. Um, the question was uh, in reference to um, your description of how solid wastes are removed with regards to, say, the, the question about the feminine products and, and stuff that, that might get passed through the, the grinder. Um, the the follow-up to that is asking what happens to the effluent is it being deep well injected and what are the what is the future uh steps that are going to be taken to um ensure that we are no longer deep, deep using deep well injection as a way to remove effluent um that might have uh, contaminant waste or other chemical type waste. Okay, I, I guess I'll take this one. I've, I've joined the uh, I've joined the guys in the in the big room. Um, so we are the county is about 100% reuse. So we strive to take all of of our effluent, treat it to a higher level, and use it for um, reclaimed water for irrigation purposes. So our deep well injection system is our, is our required backup system for disposal. So that's, that's our objective. Our objective is to use um, as much of our effluent as possible when we have off spec water or we have, uh, we're in a heavy raining season, we can't deliver any further. That's when that water goes down to deep well injection. And as a follow up to that, we are, what we call oversold in reuse. In other words, we have areas that are in need of reuse water and have signed an agreement with us, even though we don't have the flow available right now to um, service those uh, communities. So as these sewer customers come online and we increase in sewer flow, we will have more um, reuse available to uh, send out for irrigation purposes. Uh, um, another follow-up question? Um, if do you want to come up and ask it directly, or or it, it, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you caught that, but the the follow up question is: How many deep well injection sites does Martin County currently have? The sites we have uh, deep well injections located at each of the two water wastewater treatment plants in Martin County or in our unincorporated area. Any any other questions from the live audience? We're not we're all live, but <laughs> the in person audience at the library. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the question is, why hasn't um, Mark County considered the step system as an alternative to wastewater treatment? I'm not familiar with that. I'm sure they, they are. The step system um, was looked at it in a couple of areas in the state. And based on my understanding, the one system that I know of that was built north of here um, didn't function as they thought it was going to and turned out to be a bigger maintenance problem than uh, they could handle. As you can imagine, when septic tanks are put in the ground over many, many years, there's different levels of quality of construction and if they leak or whatever. So just putting a pump into the septic tank and then pumping it into a small diameter force main there was a lot of issues with clogging and everything else. So it was more of a maintenance issue than anything that's kind of uh, killed that type of project. We, we're a little over time. Um, if anybody uh, here has one more question, I'll, and then I'll, I'll have to end it after that. But thank you. Thanks, everybody, for all these great questions. Um, it's been a great discussion. Yes. 
Um, yes, it should be. The, the, the chat gets saved as well. And we, we always have that list of uh, registrants ahead of time. The question was if there's a list of the participants. Uh, you mean all the audience members or just the presenters? We have it all. Yeah, okay, that was the question, yes. All right. Yeah, we had, um, we started out with 32 and then since we're past time, uh, people have left since then. Um, I don't, I'll have to speak to my coordinate, my co-coordinator on that. Um, but if you have, if you can sign in with your contact information that will enable us to be able to reach out to you and see if that's possible. Um, anyway, hey, uh, I, I don't know if, if Ann is still there, but Ann, David, and uh, uh, Phil, thank you so much. And thanks everybody for attending uh, both uh, through Zoom and in person. Um, and uh, our next Water Ambassador webinar is going to be on June 21st. And on that day, uh, watch for the, uh, all, all people that are online will get an email about it and I'll provide that to everybody here as well, uh, is June 21st, uh, Dr. Beth Brady from Moat Marine Laboratories is going to talk about the manatee mortality situation in the Indian River Lagoon and her research uh, on manatees in that regard. So um, obviously a very important issue. Um, and uh, we'll hope to see you on June 21st, same time, noon to 1 p.m. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Heard me talking bad about septic tanks. Hey, Vincent. Good job. Thank you. All right, so we'll um, we'll send an email out to everybody uh, for the next one, um, and um, see you soon. Bye. I have to do water sampling. <laughs> We're kayaking. We're hiking. <laughs>